Answer, waves have no power in themselves, so they cannot lose what they do not have. All power lies in the stillness of the fulcrum from which the waves were extended. Waves express that power through motion, but the expression of power is not power. As waves lengthen and lower, they lose their ability to express power because the pistons of the pump, which every wave is, become shorter as the waves lengthen. Question. Explain that ideal further. Answer. Waves are pairs of oppositely unbalanced conditions. Any disturbance of balance and rest in the universe is followed by a restoration of balance or rest. Throw a stone in the water and short high waves will appear at the point of impact. The vertical diameters between trowels and crest are greater than the horizontal diameters. As the waves repeat themselves further and further away from the point of impact, the horizontal diameters lengthen and the vertical ones shorten. That means that the universal balance has been more greatly disturbed where the stone entered the water. Each succeeding wave manifests the gradual recovery of universal balance. Question: Did you not once say that the universal balance could not be upset? If it can be disturbed, is that not upsetting it? Answer: No, for when the attempt is made to upset balance in nature, a voiding force is simultaneously generated to offset that disturbance. The crest of a wave is the measure of an attempted disturbance. The trial of the wave is the equal and opposite balancing force which voids the upsetting of universal balance. These two unbalanced conditions are equal and opposite. They sequentially interchange by giving, equally giving and re-giving until the two unbalanced conditions of pressures have become the one equal pressure of stillness. Question, are there any other expressions of balance in the dying wave as it seeks stillness? Answer, yes, there are many. One is evidenced in volume. The volume of a short high wave caused by an, any disturbance is the same as the volume of a long low one far removed from it. If the short high wave, con wave contains one gallon, the short long one a hundred feet away from it also measures a gallon. Question. That seems strange. Are there other examples in nature like that? Answer. There are countless others. Consider the orbits of the planets. You know that the Sun is not in the center of any orbit, for all orbits are ellipses, not circles. When a planet is in the half of the ellipse, which is nearest the Sun, its speed is faster than when it is in the other half. The reason for that is that the area of the triangle which each planet sweeps in its journey around the sun is always equal in time. When the planet is furthest from the sun, the triangle of the area which the planet sweeps in one hour is greater than the triangle which it sweeps over when nearer the sun. As a consequence, the planet must go more slowly in order to cover the same area in the same amount of time. Kepler's second law proves this principle thoroughly. Question. That is confusing to my unscientific mind. Can you put it in more simple words or use a familiar example? Answer. Consider two apple pies, one being 12 inches in diameter and the other 20 inches. You are given a piece from the small pie which measures 45 degrees from its center. If your brother is given a piece equal to yours from the 20 inch pie, the angle must be much less than 45 degrees for it to be equal to yours. Is that clear to you now? Question, yes it is, so far as area is concerned, but I do not see how that applies to time. Answer, consider two flies walking the curved edges of the two pies. The curved edge of the 20 inch pie is much shorter than the curved edge of the piece from the 12 inch pie. Therefore, the fly which travels the shorter distance must walk more slowly to arrive at the end of its journey in the same amount of time. Each would be covering the same area as measured from the center, but their speed would be different. Is that now clear? Que question, yes, it is perfectly clear. 
Is that why the outer planets move more slowly than the inner ones? Answer, precisely. Mercury has to move very fast for its very short radius to cover as much area as the outer planets would with longer radii. Mercury has to circle the sun four times to the Earth's one, and the Earth has to circle the sun many times to equal the area covered by one revolution of Jupiter, Neptune, or Pluto. The mathematical balance of the movement of all things in nature in relation to each other is absolute. Question, why is that? Answer, because all motion in nature springs from one source, which is God's thinking. God's thinking is the motivating force of the universal heartbeat. All moving things are geared to the heartbeat. All moving things are geared to the heartbeat of this electric universe, just as the many wheels of a watch are geared to one shaft or its extensions. All motion in the universe synchronizes with all other motion in points of time, area, volume, and pressure. You and I breathe out and in about 30 times a minute, while one breath of the sun is 11 years in duration because of the difference in mass. Question, do you mean to say that the sun breathes as living beings breathe? Answer, yes, all things breathe and all things manifest the life principle of the one living being. But the manifestation of life is not life. Matter does not live, whether it be patterned in the shape of a human being, a sun, or a tree. Matter is composed of electric waves which record God's thinking, but not God never creates life, for He alone is life. His creations manifest Him, but they are not Him just as man's creations are not man. And this ends the reading of The Divine Iliad II by Walter Russell. I hope to read some more of his works, maybe Divine Iliad I, <laughs> which maybe I should have started with that one. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed these. Let me know with some comments. I love comments. Over and out. Bye-bye for now.